General Mrs. Walters, ladies and gentlemen, and most of all to the class of 2020, I'm honored to be a part of this year's commencement ceremony. I'd like to begin by thanking the family members, faculty, staff, and mentors that have invested so much in this year's graduating class. You've been a part of their accomplishments over the last four years, and you've prepared them well for the road ahead. I also want to wish the mothers that are listening a happy Mother's Day. I know we're all disappointed to be conducting a virtual ceremony this year. We're missing the opportunity to gather with our families and celebrate a truly significant day in our lives. We're missing the opportunity to spend one last day with coaches, professors, staff, and friends. And we're missing the final dress parade and other graduation week events. When I receive the invitation to join you, I look forward to being with you on campus. I look forward to spending a beautiful spring weekend in Charleston with good friends. And most of all, I look forward to seeing your faces and the faces of your family and friends as you received your diploma with pride. When I received the invitation to join you at commencement, I didn't anticipate being in my house one more day and recording this message for you on my iPad. But this is where we are. So it's natural that we think about what we're missing today. But I also know that we're not going to let what we're missing today define the class of 2020 will be the lasting memory of our time at the Military College of South Carolina. Commencement is an opportunity to reflect on what we've accomplished and to focus on the promise of the future. It's an opportunity to thank those who have helped us along the way. Class of 2020, that's our mission today. And if I know anything about Citadel graduates, they accomplished the mission even under challenging conditions. So class of 2020, you should be feeling very proud right now. Four years ago, you came to the Citadel to challenge yourself, physically, mentally, and academically, and you met that challenge. And some of you have accepted the additional challenge of commissioned service. And I'd like to personally recognize the 211 members of the class of 2020 that will leave the Citadel and go on to lead our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. I know our men and women in uniform will thrive under your leadership. But for the Citadel class of 2020, whether you'll be leading in uniform or in civilian clothes, you'll be leading. That's just what Citadel graduates do. My expectations have been shaped by your reputation, but they've also been shaped by serving alongside Citadel grads for over 40 years of commissioned service. My first mentor and fellow lieutenant was Bill McKenna. Bill was a product of the Marine Enlisted Commissioning Program and a member of the class of 1976. He showed me how to accomplish the mission and maintain high standards while taking care of people, how to listen, how to engage, how to lead from the front. I was promoted a major by Colonel Myron Harrington, a Navy Cross recipient from the Battle of Way City and a member of the class of 1960. In the short time I was around Colonel Harrington, I saw the impact of an accomplished, courageous combat leader who served others with humility, character, and compassion. And his service to others continued long after his time in uniform. In my last assignment, I served with General Frank McKenzie, a member of the class of 1979. Frank and I have been friends and served together for over 30 years. He currently commands all U.S. forces in the Middle East, from Egypt to Pakistan. Early in our careers, I admired Frank's inspirational leadership, his intellect, and his competence. Over the last four years, I came to appreciate his moral courage, his strategic vision, and his selfless service at the pinnacle of U.S. military leadership. But my impression of Citadel graduates goes beyond my military service. I arrived for my first tour of duty in Washington, D.C. in January of 1982. Less than a week later, an Air Florida flight crashed into the Potomac River shortly after takeoff. I remember hearing about one of the passengers who survived the crash and helped five others escape the sinking plane before losing his own life. It was the stuff of legends. That passenger was a Citadel graduate. He was Arlen Dean Williams, Jr class of 1957. Even after initially surviving that horrific crash, his first instinct was to lead 
and look out for others. Members of the class of 2020, I know most of you are not going to serve on active duty in the military, and few will find yourselves in situations like Arlen Williams. But most of you will lead others in industry, education, or some other form of public service. And I hope when you lead, you simply remember what you've been taught here at the Citadel. I hope you simply remember the most important lesson from graduates like Bill McKenna, Myron Harrington, Frank McKenzie, and Arlen Williams is that when you're a leader, it's no longer about you. If you lead with the integrity, competence, and selflessness emphasized over the past four years and embodied by those individuals I just mentioned, you'll come to know the sense of accomplishment that can only come from inspiring others to excellence. Citadel class of 2020, in the interest of time, I didn't talk much today about the challenges facing our country. But you recognize that we live in an incredibly complex and volatile period. The pace of change is unprecedented. We're in the midst of a pandemic with extraordinary health and economic implications. And this is all happening when trust in institutions and in leaders is eroding. Navigating in the days ahead is going to take leadership. And your generation of leaders is going to play an increasingly important role. Our education system, the private sector, and our government all need strong leaders. And as Citadel graduates, I believe you're uniquely capable of providing that leadership. So I'll close by making a simple request. Regardless of where life takes you, have the moral courage to do what's right even when it's tough. Commit to being part of something greater than yourself. And in the end, perhaps inspired by one of your predecessors from the Citadel, perhaps inspired by one of the individuals I mentioned today, be a leader of consequence. Thank you again for the opportunity to be part of this year's commencement ceremony. God bless you all in your future endeavors. And Semper Fidelis.